Brickmania's newest Panther tank is one of the most hyped releases ever and that for a good reason. This thing is an absolute beast with 166 printed pieces, 3 custom elements and up to 3 minifigures. It really is a pure piece of art, both the model itself and printing on it are insanely good and the combination of the two makes this an outstandingly impressive kit. Released on the 28th of October 2022, this model was designed by Daniel Siskind with the printing designed by Slam. It includes 849 elements and one minifigure with the option to buy up to two additional Panzer crewman minifigures. Coming in at a whopping $615 to $675, I think it is pretty clear where this hefty price tag is coming from. This thing looks absolutely incredible. Brickmania has never done this kind of printing before and I absolutely love it. There are obviously way too many printed pieces for me to go over each one of them, but we can still look at some details. Like the button crutches on each side of the side armor, the printed backside turret hatch, two engine deck air vents, and on the turret's frontal armor, the gunner side and the MG hole cover where there would usually be an MG34 sticking out. This isn't the case as this is not a normal panther. This is a Befeels panther, aka the command version of the panther. This version needed more space for radios, so it was decided to remove the turret's MG34. More and stronger radios mean more and bigger antennas, which explains the amount of antennas this thing has, and especially the big antenna on the back. This is the special FU-8 antenna, which was built using a 3D printed piece from Birdmania and looks really sweet. I find it kind of adds a really cool look to the Panther, as it is definitely not something you see a lot. My only complaint with the antenna is that the 1x2 jumper title it's built on is very wobbly, so when you hit or touch the antenna it falls off rather easily. And of course now the biggest printed features, the camouflage and Simmerit. I really like the camouflage pattern they chose and how they made the end result look. It looks insanely good. This is serious art. Slam did an incredible job with this one. It's very satisfying how all the lines line up perfectly with each other and how there's no spot that lacks printing in any way and therefore looks out of place. This thing is fully printed and again just looks amazing. They really went all in on this one. I mean even in spots that are mostly covered up like below the spare tracks there is printing. The lines transition from piece to piece nicely without there being any gaps or lines that are thinner on one piece and thicker on the other. Especially on the engine deck you can see how beautifully they go through the bricks and if you take an exact look you will see that every line has their own path going all around the panther. For example this one on the front starts on the lower frontal armor and makes its way up to the turret and down the right side of the panther. No lines seem to end up properly and without sense and it really looks like this is a realistic paint job done by a person in minifigure size. Also realistic is a nice detail of Simmerit paste. Around the sides of the hull and turret are fine, unregular and wobbly lines of Simmerit paste. This paste is something German tankers put on their tank hulls to prevent the Allied soldiers from using magnetic anti-tank mines. The paste was only added to the sides of the hull and turret and not on top. Here is the same thing, only on the sides and not on top. The only part that does lack printing on this entire tank are the wheels, which don't have any. This is however due to, according to Birdmania, the fabric that is used to produce these wheels makes it impossible to print on them. Having the wheels printed would have of course been really cool, but there's nothing Birdmania really could do against this. Now let's talk about the panther design itself. This is a completely updated design, meaning it's very different from Dan's older panthers. All around this one got updated nicely with better looking angles and even a completely new design turret. The frontal armor is at a nice and realistic angle and is surprisingly extremely sturdy. Usually angled frontal armor like this likes to wiggle around and fall off, but this is definitely not the case here. On the right side there's the hull machine gun that I think looks good, even though it obviously doesn't really look like the panther's MG mount. But the MG mount of the panther is absolutely impossible to recreate in LEGO because it's so round, so this is about as good as you can make it. I can see how he recreated it with this round piece which also has a really nice print on it. You can't move it in any direction, it is very tightly in there. On top of the hole are the two hatches for the radio operator and driver which both of course have the awesome printed camouflage on top of them. These hatches are rather hard to open so I recommend using a minifigure or an antenna to get them opened. Minifigures can fit perfectly into these hatches and can be seated facing in every direction. Of course when they are seated you can't fully rotate the gun so you have to take them out. However you won't have to close the hatches as even at its lowest elevation the gun will go above them. 
The side armor is once again nicely angled with tiles and plates and not sloped pieces which look much better and it makes it easier to attach details to it, however they don't have any side skirts. The panther tank from the 1945 Cologne Cathedral tank duel, which this panther is based on, also lacked the side skirts by probably losing them. It doesn't bother me personally so much, after all this isn't your standard mass-produced panther, but a more special one. Each side has some tools, including on the left side the long gun cleaning kit box, which is another great example of the amazing printing design. When you look at it from an angle, the lines blend into each other beautifully. Another nice detail is a rope that goes from the left frontal side all the way back to the engine deck. This however has a side effect of when the turret rotates to the right, it often gets a bit stuck on the rope as it presses against the gun cleaning kit box. Usually the rope should sit in between the gap which then makes no problems but it really likes to slip out of it. Also when the turret rotates to the left, the gun mantlet often gets stuck on the gun cleaning kit. And then both sides also feature the extremely iconic three pairs of spare track links on the back, which in my opinion are a must have for any panther tank and look really nice. What annoys me a little bit is that if you grab the panther by the spare tracks, which is a very tempting grabbing spot if you want to push it around, they like to wiggle around which feels weird and makes you lose your grip. This is the case with all spare track links and they often need readjustment after rotating the turret or moving the tank. As earlier mentioned, the back features the custom FU8 antenna, which definitely gives the Panther a really cool look to it. The two antennas on the engine deck of course make it impossible to fully turn the turret 360 degrees. There is an engine hatch which is even more impossible to open than the other hatches, so I again recommend using a minifigure or antenna. When opening you can see the white plane holding the hatch together, which should have definitely been tan instead of white, as it doesn't fit in well when the hatch is opened. Inside there's sadly not that much to see. I really wish there would be a brick built engine inside as a nice interior detail and I don't think it would have hurt the price too much either. Also there's definitely space for it. The back is again nicely angled and features tons of printing. The two boxes on each side even have the detail of these lines just like on the real thing. These boxes also have maybe even my favorite camouflage design on them as both have three stripes going to the right which together from behind looks really badass. Also they have the very small printing of their opening latches on top, again a nice attention to detail. The exhaust pipes are simple really good looking and of course have printing. There's also a little bucket which is clearly the best feature of this entire build. Although I do have some complaints about the back. The boxes are not very securely connected and like to fall off a lot and the angling of the back makes it so there's a super small gap on the edge. These are minimal problems yet are worth mentioning anyway. Now let's take a look at the new turret. This is the first time in more than 10 years that this turret got updated and I like it a lot. I think it looks much better than the older one, especially on the back with these angled wedge pieces. The sides are also beautifully angled and of course all around the turret has printing, as well as extra track links on the sides. The gun mantlet has mostly stayed the same and still looks really good. My only slight problem with it is the gap that exists when the gun is fully elevated downwards. On top there is the Panzer Commandant hatch which fits minifigures nicely but the studs on the bottom don't line up with the minifigures legs so it sits loosely in there. I would recommend putting the minifigure in the hatch in a seated position as this gives the minifigure more stability. The hatch has printing on the inner sides but none on the outer which annoys me a little bit. Also I really wouldn't recommend applying too much pressure to the turret otherwise something like this will happen. Other than that the turret rotates nicely and everything is pretty clean. The gun has its first half nicely printed all around. One of the round parts is very loose so the camouflage easily gets messed up a bit but it's no big problem. Also the 3D printed muzzle brake at the end is looking really sharp. However my biggest problem with the entire kit is how fragile the cannon is. It has very little connection to the gun mantlet and therefore falls off very very often. This kit probably has the best tracks I've ever seen in any Brick Manor kit I have so far. They are incredibly smooth rolling, sometimes they even roll a bit on smooth surfaces. Never ever had them get stuck somewhere or slip off any wheels. My only problem with them is that there's a tiny gap between them and the hull on the front. It also has some suspension which works very well. 
there is honestly not much to say about the minifigures except for that they look just absolutely amazing. Uh, just like the exclusive headphones and cap combo on the additional minifigures. Really high quality. I would have liked it however if the additional minifigures had different faces. All in all, this is by far my favorite Brickmania kit. This kit combines a great tank design with tons of next level printing. All around, this is probably the best tank with the least criticism I can give it. It's truly close to being absolutely flawless. Of course, this greatness is very expensive and therefore not so affordable for a lot of people. For me, this was personally absolutely worth the money and I hope this video helped you decide if it was worth your money. Thank you very much for watching and have a great day.